Where's the best place on your robot to put your color sensors for line font one? Today, I'm going to be answering that question. So today I'm addressing a question that's very frequently asked by a lot of my viewers. And it's something that I've kind of sort of touched on before, but I've never fully answered the question. And it's a very important topic. So I've covered like a bazillion and a half line followers, I think, by now. But I've never actually told you about the best place to put the color sensors on your robot in order to get the best performance out of your line follower. So today that's what I'm going to be talking about. Some of the specifics regarding the optimal sensor placement are going to be dependent on how many color sensors you're using for your line following, whether it be one, two, or three. However, there are a few fundamental principles that stay the same no matter how many color sensors you're using. The first of these universal fundamental principles is the height of the color sensor off of the floor. No matter what type of line follower you decide to use, your color sensor should be about one stud or a stud and a half off of the mat. This translates to about 8 to 12 millimeters. Anywhere in this range is considered the Goldilocks zone. If your sensor is too close to the mat, your reflected light intensity will be too high as read by the color sensor. And if the sensor is too far above the mat, your reflected light intensity is going to be too low. Of course, if you can't place your sensor exactly within the Goldilocks zone, you can compensate for this in your program. However, if you're too far away from the Goldilocks zone, it's really going to become a lot more difficult to program because your reflected light intensities are going to be kind of skewed. Now, the second fundamental principle relates to where on the robot the sensor goes in terms of front and back in relation to the drive motors. And I always say that the color sensor that's doing the line following should be ahead of your drive wheels. I occasionally get questions about putting the color sensor behind the drive wheels, and this really isn't that effective because if you think about it, you're putting the cart before the horse. The purpose of the color sensor is to anticipate and read changes in the line before the rest of the robot actually reaches them. And if you put your color sensor in the back of the robot and use that as your primary or only color sensor for line following, the rest of the robot has already passed a curve in the line before the color sensor can even detect it. So you're already going off of that curve in the line. That's why you always need to have the color sensor in front of the drive wheel. Now we know that our color sensors must go ahead of the drive wheels, but exactly how far ahead should the color sensors be, if at all? Now this is something that's going to come down to either personal opinion or your robot design. But as a general rule of thumb, if you move your sensors out farther away from the drive wheels, that is put more distance between your drive wheels and the color sensor, your robot's line following is going to be a little bit more stable. But like I said, this is going to depend on your robot design. If your robot's two drive wheels are too far apart laterally, that's side to side, then your robot already makes kind of sharp corrections just by nature of its wheel geometry. So you might not want to have your color sensor too far ahead of the wheels. Like I said, this depends on what you want out of your robot and you should never put your color sensor too far ahead of your wheels because that could lead to even more instability. This is a topic that I've covered in more detail in a previous video, which I think is worth checking out if you need more information on this. Moving on to the particulars of each type of line follower, I'm going to start with single sensor line followers, and this includes proportional or PID line followers. These types of line followers aren't very picky about where their sensors are placed, but the one thing that you have to keep in mind is that this type of line follower doesn't follow directly above the center of the line, rather it follows kind of off to the side, more specifically on the border between the black and white edge of the line. So it may help to put your sensor slightly offset so that the rest of your robot will be directly over the line when your robot actually goes to follow. Other than that, all of the rules about sensor height and sensor distance from the wheels apply. Moving on to two sensor line followers, we see that this type is actually a little bit more picky than a single sensor follower. You need to have both of your sensors placed such that they're the same distance from each drive wheel and that they're centered in the middle of the robot. So you can't really do any kind of offset. Not that you would really want to because by default a two sensor line follower allows your robot to travel directly on top of the middle of the line. But that's all you need to worry about with a two sensor line follower. Finally, we move on to the three sensor line follower. Now this has the most restrictions of all the line followers we're covering today, but it's really only used for rare instances anyway. And if you know how to program it correctly, 
you're still afforded quite a bit of freedom in terms of sensor placement. Now you have three different sensors. The middle sensor is going to be your proportional line follower and this you're actually going to place exactly as you would with a regular proportional line follower as if it were a one sensor follower. So you could refer back to that part of the video for advice on placing your middle sensor. The side two sensors are going to be to the right and the left of your middle sensor. In my video I show the front sensor ahead of the other two sensors and this actually isn't an ideal configuration. The reason why I use this is because I was too lazy to modify Sirius' design and I just used the color sensors that were already there for line squaring. But as you can see it still works fine even though the layout is less than ideal. Ideally you would like both of your side sensors, the extreme sensors as I call them, to be in line with your third sensor or slightly ahead of it so they can anticipate sharp turns before they actually happen. It's that whole cart before the horse type argument again. And the distance between the extreme sensors and the center line, that is how far to the side each of your extreme sensors should be, is also going to be determined by personal preference or your robot's wheel geometry or the types of turns that you're going to be tackling when your robot's line following. But that pretty much sums up the requirements for the three sensor line follower. Thanks for checking out my video this week. If you found it helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this every week. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, leave it in the comments section below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.